stretchers, row after row, comatose patients in isolation rooms. Every surface is dangerous, and so is the air, especially during an intubation. Every day you're thinking, am I going to get really sick? Am I going to be able to recover? Am I going to be one of those young people that, for whatever reason, dies from this? The history of this pandemic will be remembered not for briefings at the White House, but for the heartache in the hot zone. We journalists haven't been able to cover coronavirus the way we normally cover wars from the front lines. Good morning. Good morning. But I was able to spend two days inside two hard-hit hospitals in the Bronx to witness the toll on frontline workers trying to keep Americans alive. So we're entering a COVID area, and so everybody who goes in wears these protective gowns. And this gentleman is helping me get it on correctly. Since I, I don't know what I'm P- doing. PE monitor. Find that patient now. We need the patient to go upstairs, please. Dr. Deborah White reminds me of a general commanding a battlefield. I mean, this is what we train for. This is the moment in our career, because it's a once in a lifetime thing. She's trying to save lives. Yeah, for upstairs. While also keeping up morale. On this day, almost 800 New Yorkers died. Many of the people here are clearly in their 70s or 80s, but there are also, I'm struck that there are a lot of young and middle-aged adults here. Yes, absolutely. We range from 26 all the way up to like 59. She's constantly counting beds, keeping track of every patient. Uh, So we're just rounding, want to know how you're feeling. And sometimes, you know, that human interaction helps them. So the bus is here? Oh, so let's go upstairs quickly because the Me Too bus is here. Let's walk rapidly. Okay. Dr. White has a problem. Too many patients, not enough beds. Unless they make room, more people will die. This is a medical evacuation bus to take people from this hospital to make some space here. The bus is unlike any bus you've ever seen. It has oxygen. It has EMT people there to support the patients as they make that ride. But as this bus frantically shuttles overflow to a nearby hospital, new patients continue to pour in. The red phone rings constantly, signaling the arrival of yet another critical patient. So many that there is a traffic jam of stretchers, leading to a small army of doctors and nurses. They are about to attempt a last desperate step, an intubation. I need a vent. I need a vent. I need a ventilator. Adam, get in there. So what we're going to do is intubate her right now to support her oxygen level so that we can improve the oxygen exchange. This procedure spews virus into the air, leaving staff at enormous risk as they try to save the patient's life. Take some deep breaths. You're okay. She's attached to the vent. While intubated, patients can't speak. And what everybody knows is that they probably will never speak again. Ventilators may be life-saving, but most patients still die. Death here has no dignity. Patients can't have visitors. They're scared. They can't even see their nurse's eyes. I've reported on lots of deaths in my career, and this feels particularly brutal. Someone codes, someone dies, you go on to the next patient. Someone codes, someone dies, you go on to the next patient. And you don't have time to process those emotions until you get home. I like, I have cried just at home thinking about it all. Just when you get home, you finally take a breather, and that's when you let it all out because you don't have time to process those emotions. These doctors and nurses are risking their lives, and we're failing them. 
Some told me of their deep frustration with the government's response. We catastrophically bungled testing. The president dithered. Americans kept on partying. The result? Thousands of needless deaths. I was in the intensive care unit. The second patient who came in and was tested positive was a 27-year-old. I'm 29 right now. I'm just as healthy as this patient. It, it just oftentimes feels like a roll of the dice. I spent 12 hours by his bedside with all my PPE on. He would grab my hand and I just kept telling him that everything is going to be okay and we were doing the best we could. But I could see the fear in his eyes. And it was heartbreaking because this is still so new to us. So we're just doing what we can and we don't know what's going to happen. As I see it, the triumph here lies in the courage and humanity of the health workers. This may not be enough to defeat the virus, but it's magnificent to witness. Mm-hmm.